Hey guys, it's Malcolm from Automotive Addicts. Today I have the 2020 Kia Stinger GT2. Now, the Kia Stinger is actually a pretty hot item in my opinion from the Kia brand. A lot of people think it's a BMW or something like that or, you know, one of the German German sports cars. But Kia has done themselves justice in building this vehicle. Now, the Kia Stinger came out 2018. This being a 2020 model, they've only done a, just a couple changes. Most mostly everything's remained the same. They still got the twin turbo V6 engine, you know, 365 horsepower, 376 pound feet of torque. This one is the rear wheel drive model. You can get all wheel drive in the Kia Stinger. You know, after spending a lot of time with the Kia Stinger, I'm I pretty I'm pretty impressed for myself. It takes a lot to impress me for as a you know a performance car. You know, the Kia Stinger is not a sports car exactly. It's more of a Grand Tour, hence the GT you know name of the Stinger. But it's it's an attractive vehicle. It looks nothing like any of the other Kias uh, from a reasonable distance. But the front grille somewhat looks like the rest of the Kias. But as you can see, it, it, it's a good looking car. You got plenty of key aspects that make it stand out. You got your uh, red calipers, your Brembo brakes. You have two pistons back here in the rear, four piston calipers up front, 19 inch wheels. Now I do have some complaints about the vehicle, just but they're very few. Uh, you'll notice just me mentioning one particular driving trait about this car I do not like that being the, sus the suspension system. I'll elaborate a little more when we take it for a spin here in a minute. But other than that, I think the only unfortunate part is, is the Kia badge of a car like this. But in the case of the Stinger, it has the performance to back up, you know, its looks. Not to mention with this particular vehicle being loaded, being the Stinger GT2, it's fully loaded, has, you know, radar cruise control, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, uh, 360 degree view camera which they added uh, last year for the 2019 model the 2020 model doesn't change they do have a new uh, standard wireless phone charger now for the 2020 model but out back I'm not sure many people notice the Kia Stinger is more of a hatchback form with the the roof opening up like this where you have quite a bit of extra room and access back here you can actually fold down the seats they are a 60 40 split and under here you do have a spare tire up underneath this but otherwise I do like the fact the form factor of this particular vehicle the Kia Stinger it reminds me of somewhat of the Audi a7 in some ways it is nice to have this power lift gate as well so here's the heart of the 2020 Kia Stinger GT2 just the, like I said, the 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 engine, 365 horsepower. So inside the Kia Stinger GT2, uh, the interior is very nice. Yeah, Napa leather, it is perforated. We do have heated and ventilated seats here up front and you actually have heated outboard seats out back. There is real aluminum trim. The shifter drive control, heated and ventilated seats, 360 degree view camera, parking distance control, and the annoying start stop. Here you have your lane departure, your blind spot monitors, steering wheel controls. All right, inside the Kia Stinger, the 2020 Stinger GT2. We'll go ahead and start it up. Now the Kia Stinger has aged pretty well over the, just a couple years of his existence. The uh, gauge cluster is starting to age a little bit. It doesn't have some of the upgraded um, equipment some of the Kia and newer Hyundai vehicles have with the, when you hit, hit your signal, you actually get a display of that blind spot, which I love in those other cars. But unfortunately the Stinger does not get that. You got your fixed RPM gauge, you got your fixed uh, speedometer gauge over here on the right and a little LCD screen color LCD screen for vehicle information in the center there is a heads-up display color heads-up display memory seats over here for the driver's side got your auto folding mirrors and moving over here to the infotainment screen now the infotainment screen is a smaller 8 inch touchscreen but I do enjoy their touch screens their infotainment screens and the Kia Hyundai family of vehicles. They're very straightforward, very responsive, 
have no big complaints about this system. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. But down here you have your physical AC controls, your climate controls, and USB port. Now the new wireless phone charger, which was added last year for the Stinger. You have your 12-volt uh, charger over here, cup holders, and then your little bit of storage down here. It is an okay space here in the back. You do have a USB charger, uh, another 12-volt uh, charger, cigarette lighter charger. Uh, you'd have this little temperature control back here for your two vents in the back. Got your cup holders, sorry for the Pellegrino bottle, and your uh, sunroof up here. All right, setting off in the 2020 Kia Stinger GT2. Like I said, this is the rear wheel drive version of the Kia Stinger. And for this year, nothing much has changed for the 2020 model year. Like I said, they do have a new wireless phone charger here in the console. Otherwise, it's pretty much what I remember back in 2018 when I took one of these for a spin. Had, had one for about a week. And what I took away from is what I take away now. It's a pretty decent performer. Uh, the rear wheels break loose quite often. The stability and traction control don't sap the, the uh, fun that you have where the rear wheels start spinning. You can actually drift this car just a little bit, which is kind of fun. It's one of those fun characters about the Kia Stinger. But otherwise, performance is, is decent, but there's just that one issue I'll tell you about here in a second, once again, when I get it out here on the road. Driving the Kia Stinger GT2 rear wheel drive. It's got plenty of power, 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. So the Kia Stinger has five different drive modes. They have a smart mode, an eco mode, a uh, sport mode, normal mode, and you have your custom mode, which allows you to customize certain perimeters of the vehicle, being the powertrain, steering, and the suspension. Now the suspension dampers are adaptive dampers. They have two different settings, just a normal and a sport mode. Unfortunately, that's my issue with this car. That remains to be my number one issue for the Kia Stinger is the suspension system. The adaptive dampers will firm up at times automatically by themselves, but you don't feel much of it. But in either normal and sport mode, the body still lofts around in the back when you push this car hard. Now, most people aren't gonna push it as hard as I do. You know, I really drive cars pretty hard. I'm, I'm what you call an enthusiast, of course. You know, as you, as you guys know who watch these videos and you'll come to know me. And pushing this car around corners, uh, into turns, um, into you know offset bends and stuff like that, the body will start to loft around quite a bit. Too much for my liking as far as pushing this car anywhere near its limits. That's just a no-no for me. It could use a little bit more tire patch. Uh, the 255s in the back probably just aren't enough. They don't do justice for this particular car. Um, it's carrying around just a little bit of weight out there. Um, has a nice balance though. The weight distribution is almost 50-50. It's um, pretty well balanced. You can tell the chassis is pretty rigid for what it is, but that suspension system just kind of falters on this car when you start to push it. Now driving around town, obeying the speed limit, you know, it's perfectly fine. It's comfortable. Uh, the adaptive dampers do a good job of balancing out some sportiness and comfort. Now pushing the Kia Stinger, doesn't have much turbo lag. Now it will yeah, just like that. I mean, the rear wheels will come out. Um, Traction controls pretty much lets you have fun with it. Uh, that's that's one of the fun parts about this car is is the rear wheels spinning, you know, and you had that little bit of uh, drift, which is which is very controllable in the car. Believe it or not, you don't ever feel like you're out of control in the car, um, unless, like I said, you push it too hard and that suspension just starts bouncing around and lofting a little bit. Those rear wheels will will break loose and you'll be in a little bit of trouble unless stability control steps in and, and saves the day. But otherwise, I like the Kia Stinger for what it is. Um, it can use a little bit of refreshing and updating, you know, to meet with some of the other Kia and Hyundai products as far as electronics go. But you still have that wonderful infotainment system. Uh, most of the controls are where they need to be, very clear. Everything is, you know, where, where you want it to be. Like all my other videos, I will do a 0-60 to 60 test. The uh, Kia Stinger GT and the rear-wheel drive version hits 60 miles per hour in about 4.7 seconds. Um, I'll let this car pass and I'll just do a quick 0 to 60 here for you. Now, the rear wheels will spin coming out of the hole. Um, like I said, it doesn't have much turbo lag. Um, it, it's The turbo spooled up pretty quick, but here we go. Spinning a little bit. 30, 40, 50, and 60. Yeah, she's pretty quick, but even in doing that, 
acceleration, you feel that rear end tucking down and it'll like spring up um, suddenly after letting off the throttle, which is kind of unsettling. Like I said, I don't know what it is about Kia and their suspension systems, but they just have not nailed it as far as, you know, being on par with the competition, the Mercedes and BMWs of the world. Funny enough, Doug DeMuro bought one of these, which I commend him for. I mean, he probably, he got a good deal, you know, 37 grand for a new Stinger GT2, but his is all-wheel drive. But this car, as configured, comes $50,000. All-wheel drive is available for another couple grand. But at the end of the day, I, I, I like for what it is. Uh, 17 miles per gallon city, 25 miles per gallon highway. Yeah, the Kia Stinger GT, it, it does well for uh, for a real drive, mid-size, four-door. I mean, overall, it's a, it's a good commuter vehicle to have a little fun with. Uh, don't blame some of the guys that buy this car. It is a it is kind of a rarity. Uh, Kia doesn't sell many of these things. I don't think they're ever going to update the Kia Stinger and uh, come out with a newer model, unfortunately. But uh, there are good deals to be had on some of the pre-owned Kia Stingers, and the differences in between the 2018, 2019, and 2020 are very few. Uh, like I said, just added on a couple features like the wireless phone charger. But otherwise, the styling, you really can't beat it for a Kia. Uh, people look at this car, like I said, they think it's something else. The last thing they think is that it's a Kia when they see it approaching them. You know, just the other day, some guys thought this was some new BMW. He's like, wait, what BMW is this? I'm like, it's not a BMW, it's a Kia. That's when he started frowning at me, but hey, I took ownership of it. What do you think? You think the Kia Stinger is something an enthusiast would uh, be proud of and proud to own? Um, like I said, I know Doug DeMuro has one, and you know, kudos to him for it, you know, buying one. Myself, I wouldn't buy one uh, just because there's so much stuff, other stuff out there, and I'm willing to pay a little bit extra than the 50 grand to get into something that I really enjoy and I can push close to the limits, even on public roads. This one just doesn't do it for me, but I totally get the Kia Stinger. I mean, zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds, you know, for, for being the size that it is and, you know, the little bit of fun that you can have with the Stinger, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, rear end comes out, you know, once again. Just let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Kia Stinger. Would, is this something that you would buy if you had the money for it? Or would you choose something else? And uh, what else would you choose? But otherwise, I uh, want to thank you for guys for watching and hanging in there with me and with the videos. On, I try to stay on a more consistent basis with bringing these videos out to you. Uh, make sure you like it. Helps me out. Helps you guys out for bringing you some cool content. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe and uh, come back and check out the rest of the videos. And I catch you guys in the next one. Oh.